Are you tired of all the voices who say, focus on the bottom line numbers? Say whatever you have to, just close the sale. Just get the credit card. It doesn't matter what you deliver. You will never build a successful business until you grow a pair and stop caring so much. Here, we respectfully disagree. We give you permission to embrace who you are, how much you care, and encourage you to design a business that works for you and your clients. Welcome to The Art of Giving a Damn, the podcast that proves with every single episode that you can create a profitable business doing what you're passionate about and making a positive difference in the world. Now here's your host, Michelle Schaefer. Hey, welcome to another episode of The Art of Giving a Damn. My guest today is Nathan Hirsch, who is a serial entrepreneur and an expert in remote hiring and e-commerce. I have got questions for you. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, Nathan. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. You know, you shared that you started your first e-commerce business out of your college dorm room, and now you have sold over 30 million online. That is amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a fun journey. I feel like whenever you start a company, you, you never know what, how, how it's going to go, what the feedback's going to be, what, what ups and downs you're going to have along the way. But uh, I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by some awesome people and people that, that give us a chance when you're early on in the business and you don't have any kind of track record. And um, yeah, it's been a really fun ride. So you are the founder of Free Up. And for those listening, that is F-R-E-E-E up.com. Talk to us about it. I think, um, first of all, what it is, but then what inspired you to start it? Yeah. So I, I mean, I was a long time e-commerce seller. Like I said, I started my Amazon business when I was 20 and it was really tough to hire people back then. I mean, college kids, not very reliable yeah. and no. no 30 year old expert wanted to work for me when I was 20, 21. So I got thrown into the remote hiring world, the Upworks, the Fivers, and I, I got pretty good at it. I hired some good people, some people that are still with me today, but I always just wanted something faster, something where I didn't have to browse through 50 people, interview them one by one. And I, I really built free up by what I was looking for back in the day, that service that, that just didn't exist. And the concept is we get thousands of applicants every week, mm -hmm. virtual assistants, freelancers, agencies from all over the world. We vet them, take the top 1%, let them in and then make them available quickly whenever people need them without having to browse. They just get to put in a request and we fill it. And on the back end, we have 24 seven support in case they have even the smallest issues and a no turnover guarantee. If someone quits for any reason, we cover replacement costs and get them a new person right away. So that's what, that's really how, I guess the short version of how I eventually, or I started my Amazon business and eventually pivoted towards free up. Yeah, that makes total sense because I think one of the time one of the things that sometimes entrepreneurs don't take into account is if it takes you an hour on Fiverr to look through reviews and find somebody, you're actually losing money, uh, not saving money when it comes to finding the right people in your business because people don't stop and do that calculation of what their time's worth sometimes, and it's it's a process. I, I think top one percent is a great way to look at it because when you go to some of these other sites and you're sorting through people it really is a huge trial and error thing. Yeah, I completely agree. And I mean, let's say that you do spend a week or two weeks going through people and, and finding that right person, and then you hire them and they're not exactly what you're looking for. Well, then you start the process all over yeah. again. And, and that can set your business back weeks or months, especially if you're a startup and, and, and you just don't have that time to, to waste. I mean, you can always make more money, right? But it's the time that you can't get back. Right. Absolutely. And there's such a time savings when you're able to bring somebody in to handle tasks for you that you really shouldn't be doing yourself. Yeah. So completely agree. I mean, yeah. you, you got to figure out what your hourly rate is. And if you're a startup, maybe your hourly rate isn't that high and you should be doing $10 an hour tasks. But as you build up your business, it goes up to 50, it goes up to a hundred, hopefully it goes up to a thousand. And, and if you're constantly doing these five, 10, $20 an hour tasks, you're, you're focusing on the wrong parts of your business. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of those things that the sooner you start outsourcing, I think the faster your business can grow. So one question I know I get a lot um, that you've probably answered about a million times by now is how do you know when you're ready to start outsourcing projects and use a service like FreeUp? 
Yeah. So what I like to do is focus on how much money I made last month. So I'll look at it and say, Hey, I made X amount of money. Mm -hmm. And now how aggressive do I want to be? If I want to be really aggressive, maybe I'm investing 40, 60% of my profits back into my business. If I want to be more conservative, maybe it's 10 to 30%. We're all in different places in, in our business and in our life. So let's say you figure out, I want to invest 25% back into the business. From there, you can look at it and say, okay, do I, am I stuck in the day-to-day -day parts of my business? Is there just all these tasks that I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing where I should be focused on sales, expansion, marketing? Or are all these projects building up and things that I should be doing, like running Facebook ads or, or going on Instagram or building a website that I don't know how to do and, and I can't spend the next six months learning how to become a Facebook ad expert. I need to hire someone. So yeah. first is figuring out what your budget actually is and then it's figuring out, hey, am I creating SOPs and, and teaching someone how to do stuff I already know or am I hiring specialists and experts to do some part of my business at a high level that I don't know how to do? Yeah. Well, how do you recommend people make that decision? So I know we've got people listening who are thinking, yeah, it'd be really great to free myself up from certain things. Where do you suggest people start to decide what to assign first or next? Yeah, it, it's the toughest question to answer, right? Because it, it's, first of all, I'm not a business coach. So it's tough for me to talk to someone on Fair the phone enough. for 20 minutes and be like, oh, you need to hire this person yeah. right now. Like that, that just doesn't make a, a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. For me, you really have to know I kind of like to divide it up into three levels of people. You got the followers, the five to $10 an hour that they're there to follow your standard operating procedures. You got the doers that 10 to 30, the projects, the graphic design, the website building, maybe it's a social media channel or content writing. And then you got the experts, the 20 and up that can bring their own strategy, their own expertise yeah. to the table. So you have to figure out what are, what are your core competencies? What, what are you the best at in your business and figure out the other stuff are you struggling to just get it done and follow the process you've already established? Is it more project-based work that you just need to get this stuff done and you're, you're only good at X amount of things? Or are you trying to implement a strategy or you need someone to come in with their own strategy? So everyone's at a different point and, and sometimes it, it is a little bit of trial and error. I know yeah. with, with my social media, when I started free up, I hired a basic level person. I, I created a little system for posts and I just had them do it. And, and I went back and I handled the other side of my business and I helped grow it and get clients. And as my budget increased, okay, let's add some mid-level people. Let's add a content writer. Let's add a graphic designer. Let's add a video editor. So that person on social media has better and better things to post. And then I go back to running my business and I'm growing it and I'm scaling it. My budget increases. Okay, now we want to put more into social media. Let's hire a Facebook ad expert. Let's hire someone with an actually strategy and I can still keep those other pieces in place, but now I, I want more of that big picture stuff because I want social media to be a big part of my business. So th there's no right or wrong way to go about hiring. I, I like to focus on low risk, high reward situations. If, if I hire someone to run my Instagram and run my Twitter and maybe do some lead generation on LinkedIn, maybe not all three of them work, maybe only one or two of them does, but it's not like I'm going to go homeless by the, by hiring someone for two months to run my LinkedIn. You, you shut it down or you pull some money back and you invest into, into what's working. And a lot of times you don't know exactly what's going to work unless you try a bunch of different things. Yeah. You know, what I really like about what you said there that I hope everybody caught was the process of you don't have to jump in the deep end and bring in 15 experts at, you know, huge salaries to help you with stuff. You can start with small tasks and work your way up. Uh, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see entrepreneurs make when it comes to outsourcing or bringing people in to help with different tasks? So what I see a lot and hiring is hard, right? So let's say you're trying to find a VA and you, you go through a few, a few VAs, you don't like them. And then you, you finally find someone you like. Yeah. So what does the average entrepreneur do? They, they load that VA up with everything and their entire business becomes dependent on that one person. And it might be good short term. You might sleep better at night, but long term it's really risky. If that person gets sick, mm -hmm. if that person quits on you, that's the kind of stuff that can set your business back months. So, as you're hiring, as you're adding these different tasks, you got to remember to diversify, to, to make sure you're splitting up time. When I hired my first VA, I started her part-time. And instead of increasing her hours to full-time, I hired a second VA part-time. So I had two part-time VAs, and then I increased them both to full-time, and then I had a third VA. So having a little bit more strategy behind mm -hmm. how protected your business is is something a lot of people forget to keep in mind when they're hiring for the first time. 
That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I know people who they've lost their VA and it's like they're back to trying to both find somebody, run everything themselves. And it does set them back months in their business. Yeah, Absolutely. That's, that's smart. So here's another question. As I looked at what you guys do, that's a little bit different. There's not actually a lot of pieces that uh, people who work with you have to handle themselves. You go through the applications and get the right people there and help people connect. Um, it looks like the interview process, though, is still a piece that your clients have interviews with the potential candidates. So what are some questions that we should be asking in interviews to get the right match and to really set both sides up to succeed? Yeah, and, and keep in mind, we have lots of different clients. I mean, we have people who have been using us for years and they trust us and they hire them and they barely talk to them and they get okay. started. And we have other people that, that come to us with these intense interview processes that they've spent years perfecting and, and they okay. put through and, and everything in between. So it's totally up to you how much or how little you want to interview them. And okay. we spend a lot of time vetting these people for skill, for attitude, for communication, and, and you're welcome to vet them for that as well. But what we encourage you to do is to vet the person and make sure they're the right fit for you. Because even the best freelancers in the world are not the best fit for every single client out there. So what I like to do is focus on myself. What, what am I like to work with? I talk fast. I'm direct. I'm not the most warm and fuzzy person. I have certain communication styles I like, like Skype. So for me, knowing myself and my team and how I like to do things is a huge aspect to interview. And, and I hire people on the free up platform too. I actually just hired a new VA today off my own platform. And again, I, I knew, awesome. I, <laughs> thank you. I knew my team vetted them, but for me, I'm figuring out, are they going to be the right fit for my personality, my management style, my team leader? So yeah. it, everything I just mentioned for, Hey, how do you communicate? How do you handle certain issues? For me, it was a customer service role. So I wanted to say, mm -hmm. Hey, what's your approach for, for dealing with unhappy clients? What do you, care about on weekends and what, what distractions are, are there that might prevent you from, from working weekends when we need you to really focusing on the exact role, the exact fit that I need rather than the overall stuff that, that we take care of most of the time. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. Um, hiring based on those types of questions, you know, the skills and the systems you can put in place as long as the personality and the, the back and forth is a, a good fit. I've, I've seen a lot of people hire competent people that they just can't get along with and it <laughs> does not go well. Exactly. I mean, we're, we're all different personalities. I mean, someone who might be a great VA for you might be incredibly frustrating for me, even though that VA does great work. Right. Absolutely. So what's the biggest lesson that you've learned in starting and growing free up to where it's at today? For me, it's all about feedback. I mean, I, I kind of look at a startup that, and we're really proud of our startup, but startups make mistakes. There's human errors. There's things that, that you just can't, like I can't compete with Upwork on software. I can't compete with Upwork on marketing. There's always going to be things that other people are doing better than you. So what we really focus on is feedback. We want to hear from clients, from freelancers, from my internal team, from my business partner, what are ideas, how can we improve across the board? Now, that doesn't mean we can implement every piece of feedback instantly, but we at least have that information. And when you're genuinely trying to make the people that you're surrounding yourself with happy and have a better experience, mm -hmm. people understand that. People, people love it when they tell me feedback and a few weeks later that, that upgrade is in the software or, or we changed how our email looked, whatever it is. So for me, it's all about listening to feedback. I had an experience back in the day where we, we fired, where we had a lot of turnover. We had about 50% turnover. And wow. before, before this third person had quit for the exact same position, before he walked out, I asked him for an exit interview. And uh -huh. during that exit interview, which was incredibly uncomfortable, he hit yeah. me to my core. He told me everything that was wrong with my culture, my interview process, my, my leadership style, my management, how I talk to people everything. But I should have written that guy a check right there because that information was so powerful. It helped me make my turnover less than 5% three years later. So, and the last thing that he told me, which was always stuck with me was that in the three months or, or whatever he was working there, this is, that was the only time we'd ever asked him for feedback. So oh. now, now I'm crazy about feedback. I ask people for feedback all the time.
And every time I'm on the phone with a client or I'm talking to my internal team, I just went out to lunch with my partner who's visiting and we're just talking about different parts of the business we can improve. So for me, that was a very valuable lesson that I learned years ago and it's something that I'm very passionate about today. You know, that's, that's such an important distinction. I hope people are listening for really what you just shared about feedback because when I think about it from my perspective as a customer, if I'm choosing between two different companies, um, it's easy to think that I would just go with, well, who's the big 900 pound gorilla, but that's not actually what I'm looking for. I'm looking for who's listening, who cares about me as a customer, who's going to listen to my feedback. And there's been so many times that I have gone with a smaller company or I've gone with a more expensive choice just because I feel like they hear me. And I think that's a great um, realization for all of us as entrepreneurs to keep in mind that, that what matters most to our clients really is that feedback piece of it. And if we want to compete in a, in a very competitive marketplace where we've got all these other companies doing something similar, feedback is how you can stand out, differentiate yourself, and really gain an advantage in the marketplace that it doesn't take a huge budget to listen to feedback and make changes and shifts based on it. That's a fantastic view. It, and a lot of times what you think people like just isn't true. <laughs> and there's no way for you to know that yeah. unless you listen to other people. Yes, that is always an interesting conversation when you think you've got like the best thing ever and, and customers are like, well, yeah, that's okay, but this thing over here is what we want. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the most interesting feedback you've gotten from a customer or client that's helped you in shaping the way free up works? Oh, that's a great question. I, I, I think... <sighs> I don't know. There's so much because we just have so much team, so many teams. I, I think our, our, our overall UI design, the, the way we originally set it up, like in our mind, it, it was simple. You create an account, you put in a request, we fill the request, you meet with the person. And, and I think so many people were used to the, the browsing that all the other uh-huh. platforms had. So we, we, where we spent more time just making that process, people were just super confused when they got there. They're like, all right, how do, how do I search for freelancers? And, and what we had to do was really make it clear upfront where people were creating an account in our marketing, in, in our email newsletter, what people get when they sign up, the, in the actual page when they get there with like a how-to or, hey, this is what you expect. A lot more effort up front where we thought people would just get there and just understand it right away. And we realized we really had to provide a lot more information on the front end. Wow. Well, that makes sense because very often whatever the market is used to is just what they expect. I can see where that would be a little bit of a challenge to be able to, to rewire people's brains about, you know, there's, there's an easier way to go through this process. It's similar. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the McDonald's movie or the McDonald's story, but all the, all the drive throughs people used to always go up or have people come to their cars and deliver food. And with the initial McDonald's, they would they get there and no one would come to their car. And they had to actually go to people's cars and be like, get out, like, go get your food up there. And it, it took forever for people to actually understand like the new process that was in town. Yeah. Yeah, anytime you brought something semi-disruptive, in a sense, into an industry, there is that process of, no, 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 this is the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, wow. Well, tell me a little bit more about how people can connect with you guys, find out more about hiring through you, because I know uh, 99% of my audience are entrepreneurs who are using sites like Fiverr, like Upwork, and I know from conversations, I'm not the only one frustrated by the process of, you know, I'm not an HR expert. How do I find and filter? And, and I mean, I, I defaulted to when I outsource something on Fiverr, I will hire four or five people for the same project to make sure I get one that actually works. So what you're doing seems like a much better system. So for those of us who would like more info, where do we go to find out more, to ask questions, and to get connected with you guys? Yeah, so if you go to freeup.com with three E's, my calendar is right at the top. If you ever want to book a meeting with me, you can create a free account, mention this podcast or YouTube video if you're watching us there, to get a free $25 credit to try us out. Um, You can find me on any social media channel, The Real Nate Hirsch. Um, And and yeah, I'm I'm probably one of the easiest people to contact. My team's around 24-7, so feel free to reach out to us and definitely check out the FreeUp blog and the FreeUp YouTube channel if you're looking for content about improving your hiring percentage. 
Awesome. All right. We will make sure there are links to all of those things somewhere near where you are listening or watching this podcast today. And uh, take Nathan up on that credit to check out their service and see if just maybe it might save you some time, energy, and help you find people who are a better fit. I know I will be checking that out today. Thank you, Nathan, so much for your time for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Please rate, like, review, subscribe, and we will catch you back soon for another episode.